Welcome to Iona's Iotas, where the tiniest change can make the biggest difference. Today, I am joined by NLP coach Zach Hammond, all the way in Las Vegas, in sunny Las Vegas. Hi, Zach. Welcome. Hi, I'm super excited to be here. This is the, the first time I'm being interviewed, so I'm really excited. Yay! You've got your own YouTube channel where you interview inspiring, awesome coaches and people as well. So we'll have to put a link to that at the bottom of this interview so that people can follow that and catch up with your work. So yeah, it's so exciting. Yeah, I, I'm usually the, in your position, so this is, this is fun. Yep. I've swapped. So you're in, you're in sunny Las Vegas. I'm super excited because I'm hoping that by chatting with you, you are like sending us some sunshine because it's been a little bit rainy here in Scotland as it always usually tends to be. So I'm hoping that you're like just by us chatting, we've like forced the sun to shine over here because we really like it's summer. Come on, come on, it's summer. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I so, think it's like the most sunny days in the, in the world happen here in Vegas, something like that. Oh. That sounds like super, a dream. Super sunny right now. Amazing. A dream come true for, for me, certainly. Um, okay, so, so Zach, you're an NLP coach. So just for anyone who's not familiar with that term, could you explain to us what NLP means? NLP is uh, what the founders would call it's a study of excellence. Uh, it, the, the acronyms NLP means Neuro Linguistic Programming. Neuro meaning our nervous system, our neurology. Uh, language. Um, that's how we describe our experiences, our reality, our communication, the language that we use when we're in negative states, the language we use in our positive states, and then of course the programming. Uh, a good chunk of our programming comes from the age of zero to seven. Those are our imprint years. Um, virtually any psychologist you talk to will say that. Uh, so we're conditioned from beliefs about our health, about our finances at a very young age, and this continues throughout our whole life, but usually the crucial time period is that zero to seven time frame, And uh, so NLP also gives us systems to uh, break free of that programming so we could be who we really are meant to be. Uh, it gives us tools and techniques to enhance our communication. I mean, anytime we want to do anything in life, we need to be able to communicate our ideas. Like if you're at a time when you had a brilliant idea, but you weren't able to verbalize it to the person in front of you, and then your idea got swept under the rug. I never wanted to happen to any of my ideas, so I wanted to be an expert at that. So uh, it gives you an amazing communication. Also performance. Uh, most of the athletes in the world, uh, most of the self-help gurus that you follow are NLP trained. They don't tell you. It's kind of like a big secret amongst the world's like most successful, like Tony Robbins is the prime example. If you like Tony Robbins, if you like what he teaches, he is an NLP expert and redefined it to match his brand. Uh, people on TV, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Barack Obama, uh, the list goes on and on and on of people that use NLP. Uh, it's such a big field. Uh, it's such a big field. Uh, and, and, I, and I love it. There's always new things to learn, new things to improve. So yeah, I, I hope that answered your question. It absolutely did. Thanks for that. And speaking of ideas, from what I have seen and heard from you, you are an ideas man. So I would love for you to tell us about your journey so far. So where you began, your roles, projects, and your passions. Yeah, the funny thing is, is it's not like my journey ever began because it, it's been my entire life. When I was a kid, I wanted to make money. So I'll just think of an idea in my head and then I'll just take action and do it. And that's pretty much my childhood is where I learned, like if you have an idea in your head, picture an NLP, we have different senses. I'll, I'm gonna teach while I tell this, my story. So we have our visual senses, we have our kinesthetic, our feelings, we have our auditory digital, our self-talk. Uh, I'm a very visual person. Uh, you'll see me look up in NLP throughout this whole interview, so I want you guys to watch, because you'll actually be learning NLP while I'm doing this. Every time I look up, I'm creating a picture in my mind. Uh, that's neurology, the N in NLP. So I would create pictures in my head of me making money, and I would think of an idea, maybe a lemonade stand, make a bunch of money doing that. Uh, I got really creative one time and, and I noticed that one of my neighbors would leave for the entire summer. So me and my brother, we, we looked in their backyard and uh, we saw a, a garden full of roses and I was kind of like an outlaw back then, but I went in there, jumped the fence, cut a bunch of the roses and sold them door to door. So I always saw the opportunities in everything. I uh, made cookies, sold them door to door. And then 
uh, like noticed like this is all sensory acuity NLP we teach this how to be aware of your surroundings also aware of the changes your clients make but I was always very aware that the the cuter the kid was the more money they would make doing the lemonade stand so then uh, when I got older I got my little sister to do the lemonade stand and then she, she would be like the salesperson for it and I would organize it and I would organize them to go on routes to sell cookies and different things like that. So uh, that, that's what happened when I was a kid. Uh, when I was a kid, that's really when it started. And then, um, and then uh, a, bunch more, a bunch more ideas later on in the future. But you want to go into the basketball so we keep it chronological? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's do that. So after I had the whole experience with like doing these little hustles of the kid, making money, I I found a love for basketball and uh, I was a huge Laker fan. I grew up in California. So naturally that was when Kobe Bryant was winning the championships and, and Shaq. So I was I fell in love with Kobe and I wanted to be like him. I wanted to play basketball. And the thing was, this is sixth grade. So in sixth grade, I found it, but I sucked. <laughs> I was terrible. I couldn't, I was unathletic. I was even a little chubby at this time. And I was the last person to get picked, but I, I was determined. So this, this time period in sixth grade, I learned that, well, anyways, I ended up getting really good. So I got really good. I, I played uh, in all these tournaments around the world. Uh, and I learned firsthand that you could suck at something. And then through practice, through modeling, finding people, finding a coach that could help you uh, elevate your game, finding asking someone that's better than you for like secrets on, on drills and extra, I was all, I was never afraid to ask people questions and that's NLP also like you find someone that does something that you want to do you just simply ask them questions how do you do what you do what's your secret what do you do on your day to day like, what is your mentality this is all NLP modeling so I'm, so I'm teaching while we're doing this so I would, I would find a coach he would give me tips and then I would actually put in the practice so I, I took action on what I would learn and go to the gym every day, work hard. And I've seen a tremendous growth. Uh, I, I made my varsity team, uh, even had some, some college opportunities to play. Um, so I learned firsthand that you could suck at something and become great at it. And it was, a, it was a huge life lesson that I have to this day. I know that I could start a podcast from scratch eight weeks ago, however long I started it. And eventually I'll be really good. So that mindset in, um, in uh, sixth grade through high school really helped me. And uh, then what happened was I didn't reach my goal. I didn't reach my outcome because in NLP, we have a concept called cause and effect. Uh, effect, is when, effect is when you're blaming other people. You're a victim. You're, it, it's everybody else's fault but yours. Uh, the, the government is out to get me. You, you come up with an excuse for everything. I had a new high school basketball coach. He put me in a, a position that I wasn't comfortable with. And I started pointing the finger, sort of blaming, and uh, I lost my empowerment. I wasn't empowered, and then it, it sent me into a deep depression. I was lost, and, and, and I, I lost my first love, so it's like I didn't, I didn't know if I was ever going to feel that way again. I didn't know if I would ever find something like I would be willing to put that much of my energy and commitment to again. And uh, – and uh, that's, that's, uh, that's what happened after that. And then I went into, I went into uh, uh, after high school life. Well, in high school, I started transitioning to uh, thinking of my ideas again. So I started going back to my ideas. And uh, me and my friends thought of like playing capture the flag or, or fugitive or volleyball or water balloon fights. And me, I like to take an idea and make it huge. So this was when Facebook first was starting. So like the event page, if you guys are familiar with that, we could host an event. And uh, I was one of the first people in Las Vegas to start broadcasting events on Facebook for like Fugitive, uh, Capture the Flag, uh, Water Balloon Fights, Volleyball. And they literally all went viral. Uh, multiple high schools in the Northwest of Vegas would all show up. Uh, that's where like a thousand people came to like some of these Capture the Flag games. I was like, whoa, okay, this is awesome. And uh, I started getting into that. And then uh, later on, it turned into parties. And then uh, it turned into a bunch of cool stuff. My friend actually got a scholarship to Yale for these events. And that's when I learned painfully that you could actually leverage 
if you if you create something, you could leverage it to get cool things. So my friend got a scholarship to Yale. Uh, he wrote about our events in his like college entrance paper. So that was pretty cool. And then I realized that we were doing something pretty cool at that time. Uh, I went to college, studied psychology, uh, dropped out because everything I was learning in NLP was so much more advanced. Uh, the documentaries I was watching, I didn't feel fulfilled in college. And uh, I was just in that depression again, like, okay, hey, what I'm going to do, I'm, I got to find a way to make money now. And uh, I, I don't have college anymore. So then I thought, I just thought of another idea. My idea was, okay, no other throw events. I love music. I love parties. Uh, I started hosting uh, concerts and events. Uh, no, actually, rewind. I was super... I was super, this is my first time telling the story. <laughs> so I was, uh, I wanted to do that, but I was uh, in doubt. I was in fear. I didn't have courage. I had all these negative emotions and limiting beliefs about myself. And uh, I ended up taking an NLP training. And I took an NLP training March of 2015 and uh, totally changed my life. I, I knew how to communicate clear. I had strategies, techniques to accomplish anything I wanted to accomplish. Uh, so then two months later, I started, I hosted my first event. Uh, it mainly took me just two months of just asking venues for the opportunity. Uh, in NLP, we teach something called rapport where you could create trust with another individual uh, very fast, like instantly. So I was able to create rapport with one of the venue owners. And uh, when I, when I, he trusted me enough to give me the, the keys to the venue. And he pretty much let me start hosting events. And the first event I sold out, the second event we sold out, like we were on this huge momentum. Uh, EDM Magazine won us an award like the first few months. Uh, a year later, uh, we won best of the city in Vegas. Uh, I had a team with me that, that was helping me. Uh, I love them. But then uh, we went from, literally nothing like i had 300 dollars to my name to growing the 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 most success sex, successful uh underground music company in vegas we hosted the first ever uh first ever hip-hop festival uh in vegas uh what else did we do booked a lot of artists that were on coachella uh, edc some of the biggest in the world and uh most importantly like we literally built a culture in vegas for uh, inspiring musicians. That was my big drive. My motivation was to give a platform to emerging artists so that they have a place to let their gifts shine. I really like music. I wasn't, I had sensory acuity, like we were talking before. I don't have the patience to learn and I'd rather just set it up, the, the, the event. But that was all credit to NLP. It gave me the, the knowledge I needed to, uh, to make that happen. So you're, when did you start NLP then? When did you start? Was that when you were studying psychology at college? Did you start looking into it and like researching it? I started researching it in 2012 because I knew for a fact that the reason I wasn't successful in basketball was my mindset, mm -hmm. uh, my beliefs about myself. So I knew that if I would have had NLP, I, I needed to find something for that. So I found it in 2012 after basketball. And I was just studying it on my own uh, until 2015 when I was at my deepest point. I was like, man, nothing's working for me right now. I'm not making money. I'm not doing anything right. I was like in a deep hole. I called an NLP company that happened to be in Vegas. And uh, I got on the phone with the, the sales rep and instantly I knew that this is what I had to do. Uh, most people, like opportunities will be right in front of their face and they don't take action. Like I, I didn't have the money to do it. But I, I knew from my childhood that you could always go out and create what you want. So immediately, I didn't have the money to sign up right then, but I knew I was going to sign up. So I, I started uh, hustling, going door to door, selling uh, water systems. And uh, I sold enough to pay for my NLP practitioner. So 2015 in March was when I actually got certified. Uh, so I got certified in 2015. And I've continued my education in NLP uh, till now, like, a, like I am a coach, but I'm pretty much halfway through my NLP trainers evaluation. And it's taken me uh, five years to get to this point of actually becoming a trainer where I could certify others. So it's been a, since 2015 to now, I'm still studying it. That's excellent. So when you're talking about like the, 
repetition. So when you were playing basketball and you, way back at the start, you were finding that you weren't very good at it. Um, what I really love, so I'm quite familiar with NLP and what I really love about it is like repetition um, and how like we um, practice and, you know, practice creates confidence and practice creates um, that muscle memory so that we can then go in and it becomes second nature to us. So did you find that like perhaps when you were younger, you were kind of using some of the subconsciously using some of the NLP techniques without really knowing what they were? A hundred percent. So that's what a lot of people don't know is that NLP is not something it's, we're all doing it no matter what. It's the study of just like our human physiology or behaviors or thinking. So whether you know NLP or not, you're, you're doing it. So that's why it's so, you're just not conscious of it. NLP makes you conscious of what you're unconscious and your unconscious mind controls all your behavior, your learning, uh, the change, the deep changes that you make. Uh, so NLP simply makes your unconscious strategies conscious, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I was mentioning when I was a young, when I was really young, I knew sensory acuity. I was aware of how, how things worked in basketball, uh, yeah, I was always using it. I was always using NLP, uh, the repetition and everything. Uh, and the, the mindset too. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of it, like how you could create your, your yeah, the vision, your, visioneering. Your, like yeah. I like to call it visioneering. It's like you're engineering, you're visioning, you're creating your future. Because the brain doesn't know the difference, or the mind doesn't know the difference between what's imagined and what's real. So if we want to create a future event, and you'll know this yourself, the athletes use this technique a lot. Is when that they want to achieve a win, they will they will visualize and imagine that win happening over and over again. So that when it actually comes to taking part in the event, the body and the the mind believes that it's already happened. So it's easier for them to achieve the win or the goal, whatever it is that they're, they're doing. I mean, I absolutely love that. And I think they that did a, I'll, t I'll add to what you said. They did a study mm -hmm. with some basketball teams and one basketball team had to shoot a hundred free throws a, a day. Uh, the other basketball team shot a hundred free throws in their mind a day and they both had identical outcomes. Uh, the one that actually excelled is when they did both shot a hundred free throws a day and then also shot a hundred free throws in their mind they did better than both of those groups. Yeah. But yeah. it proves that if you're doing something in your mind, Alex Rodriguez did this all the time, the visualizing home runs. Uh, like you do it like 300 times a night. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, amazing. It's awesome. And then you, of course, your, your cause and effect. So your universal laws, like I am obsessed with universal laws and how like we, you know, the cause and effect law is that every action has an equal reaction. So if you're putting out, if you're like not feeling good about something and you're just like, well, lazy, well, I don't want to do this. And that's what you're going to get back because you create your own reality um, based on your belief system and your thoughts and your actions. Um, which is why like, I feel NLP is so important and such a really great thing that so many people can use. And it's really, really accessible. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, how much money you have. Like it's so useful and so accessible um, and I, I've used it myself in the exact same way over the years unintentionally without even realizing I'm doing it and then of course my one of my best friends started practicing it and started teaching it and she was like oh by the way did you know you're doing this and I'm like uh ah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's, it's so much fun and I absolutely love it so um in terms of your so when you started off your entertainment uh industry shall we say and um, that was called was that called Jam Nation? Yeah, the jam meant just about music okay. because uh, I was really into all types of music. So I went from uh, EDM music to hip hop, like anything. I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to uh, break the norms, have like all do different types of things. Uh, it, it was, uh, it was really fun. That sounds excellent. We need something like that here in Scotland for sure. We have like loads of underground music, um, but um, if you want to come to Scotland and do that, that would be great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we did uh we did really creative things like we did like secret location rsvp only uh yeah. warehouse events uh, i was really like wanting to go against the grain of society at that <laughs> sounds yeah. crazy but I, I really wanted to just like be, yeah i wanted to do like secret things and all these things and then it turned into such a like we threw a pop we, we what we got known for is we wouldn't even announce an event till the morning of like it the morning of and then like a thousand people would show up 
and we weren't we weren't even prepared and uh, what happened was uh, we started getting like blacklisted from certain hot like Hard Rock Live and Hotel in Vegas they blacklisted us. Um, why? Why? What started, happens? What uh, happened? It, uh, it's just like the uh, politics of the casinos here in Vegas, I, I think. And any t any successful like underground company in Vegas usually gets targeted. And I started not being able to use any venues. It, it became really stressful. Uh, undercover agents and cops would show up and like check things out. Uh, my mom started getting uncomfortable with it because I mean, if anything happened to somebody that could have been a huge lawsuit on me. Uh, so then it became more stress, more pressure. Uh, it, and, and, uh, it really started messing with me. I had a huge ego at that time. I thought I was like something really, really, really special <laughs> and I'm not, well, yeah, whatever. But it was just like messing with my psyche a little bit. So I ended up just walking away. I've never had a problem with walking away. So with basketball, I knew it was my time to walk away because like I said, with, uh, with uh, the childhood, I knew I could always create a new idea. And uh, with basketball, I learned that I could be suck at something and become great at it. So I knew if I could walk away from basketball, walk away from Jam Nation, create something else, which, uh, oh, which I, I knew how much NLP impacted me. And I'm an actual practitioner. Some people just listen to the theory. I actually go out into the field and do it every single day. Uh, like every day I'm doing NLP, practicing different concepts, uh, mastering them. So then I was like, you know what? I did all this stuff. And a big thing about, about my heart for the music wasn't even about the events. It was more about making a platform for the underground artists, musicians to help them. So then I was like, you know what? I think I'll make a bigger impact if I started teaching people NLP. I start uh, educating people on what I knew to become successful and uh, how I went from no money at all to be able to do like best of the city. So I started studying my NLP more, getting back into like the coaching aspects. I coached a few people. I started hosting uh, workshops in Vegas. And then I had all my energy, all my focus, all my like, energy goes where your attention, like, where your attention flows. All my attention, all my energy was on NLP. That's how I, when I'm passionate about something, I go all in. There's no other thing. So I went all in. And I think because my energy was so strong on it, that actually the school that I train with, the Tad James Company, NLPcoaching.com, if you want to look it up, it's the oldest and largest NLP uh, school in the world. Uh, they're in Australia. They're here. Uh, they have a really 40 years. It's pretty much a source, a uh, huge reputa reputation in the field. Uh, they actually called me up to, uh, to help with the, the USA sales. And at this time period, I've never worked a real job in my life. Uh, that's what I pride myself on. I was like, I'm never going to work a job, never going to work a nine to five job ever. That's kind of what one of my driving forces with everything that I did uh, since I was a kid. But uh, it was a huge opportunity. I wanted to be personally mentored by uh, Dr. Tad and uh, his wife, Dr. Adriana. They're uh, legends in the industry. So I took that opportunity. Uh, I'm still there now. And uh, it's really taken my NLP to eons, uh, than I was before. And uh, I'm going to become a trainer soon to actually uh, train other individuals in this. So uh, that's, that's where uh, Jam Nation led me. Like, uh, yeah, but it took, I had to, I had to be comfortable with walking away. Most people aren't comfortable with that. So it, when you walk away from something, you have to know there's a seed that's of opportunity equal uh, for you. You have to have that belief uh, some people walk away thinking they're never, it's all about your mindset. If you think that there's never going to be anything better then there won't. So I knew that there was better things ahead for me, especially if I'm going to give back and help people. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I think that a lot of people get stuck with the, not cause not so much the comfort, but the complacency of where they are and they're too afraid to say goodbye and cut cords and stop, you know, stop what they're doing. And I think it is really, really useful for if something's not working out for you to just be like, you know what, it's time, it's time to move on, do something else and know that whatever you have done previously has benefited you massively so that you can then take those skills and those um, tools that you've learned and take them and use them in something else that your next best, your next thing, your next project. So what is your main inspiration in life then, Zach? 
Uh, that's a big question. So my inspiration is always changing. Uh, right now, it's to, to make an impact. Uh, it's funny because this whole pandemic has actually raised my inspiration more than ever. Like when, when, when things get, become challenging, uh, for me, that's when I perform the best. And uh, seeing this whole thing happen, seeing how like suicide prevention hotlines are up 8,000% in California. They went from 12 calls a, a month in March to uh, like 1,800 calls. Uh, no, February, they had eight calls. In March, they had 1,800 calls. I don't know the numbers for uh, April, but it, we're, we're slipping into a mental health crisis and depression, anxiety are rampant right now. So that's me and my whole team in the USA for the, the NLP coaching. We've been on fire. We know that NLP is the solution for this. Uh, thousands and thousands hundreds of thousands of people have had success with eliminating those negative emotions uh, with NLP, timeline therapy, all these modalities. So my main focus is, is helping these people. I also have inward drive. I have inward inspiration for myself. Uh, it's okay to be, uh, it's okay to practice self-care. So I'm in, my main inspiration is to be as healthy as I can. If you watch my podcast, I talk about health because that's going to be my key to a long life. Uh, also, I just want to be the best me. I, I was a huge Kobe Bryant fan. He has a quote from uh, everybody wanted him to be the next Michael Jordan. He said, I just want to be the best Kobe I could be. And that's kind of how I am. I want to see how far I could go in life. Uh, that's a big inspiration just to see uh, where I can go, how healthy I could be, how much I could achieve. I don't really like awards too much. Doesn't mean much, but I mean, it's cool little milestones in your journey. So I would like to eventually win something in NLP like I won in the music. Uh, so that's what inspires me. Also, um, NLP is still fairly, you have the founders uh, from the 70s. If you think of psychology, it goes back probably a few hundred years. I don't know. Uh, most of NLP is based on neurology, which a lot of people confuse. Uh, NLP for being psychology. A lot of it comes from neurology. But uh, NLP is very new. It's only like 40 years old. So I look at it as an opportunity that I could be a pioneer. I could innovate. And uh, I could be on, hopefully I could be on like the Mount Rushmore of NLP. So that's one of my inspirations. I always think big. So uh, the bigger I think, the bigger ideas I have, uh, the more force I have to take me in that direction. Fantastic. And I think that mental health at this time is really interesting because the pandemic, the world, the global pandemic has really shone the spotlight on mental health for so long. It's like, oh, you can't see it, therefore it's not there. But this time has been a really, really um, opportune time to shine the spotlight on mental health. Um, and I actually did a radio show here in Scotland for a couple of weeks there focusing on mental health because the government knew that um, mental health, suicide, and think rates were going to shoot up as soon as um, they heard that the lockdown was gonna continue. And I'm very, very feeling very grateful for this time because I feel like my life up to this point has been a little bit of a rehearsal for this time, if you know what I mean. And this, and I'm the same as you, I very much thrive in times of, um, when the going gets tough, it's time for me to step up. Um, and it's been really, really amazing being part of a, a network of people um, who are really just, really focused on positive mental health and just shining the light on it and saying your physical manifestations and your your mental and emotional health is all related it's all relevant and it's just it's fascinating obviously it's not great because at this point in time there's a lot of depression anxiety suicide and things but we're talking about it and that for me is like really really good so like we're finally talking about it. it's finally getting some traction on mainstream media it's finally getting um a lot of investment and and money put into um improving mental health of the world not just certain countries that have money it's generally like quite a global thing i think at the moment yeah it's everybody knows that the what you just mentioned is true and uh one of the things nlp works for everything that we just talked about it works here's the thing one of the critiques of NLP is NLP, we're looking for the root cause of the issue. If you find someone that's actually legit and knows what they said, 
And also, it, it, you have to find an NLP practitioner that their mindset is clear. Uh, it's a lot about the, the beliefs of the, uh, the, the practitioner themselves. So they don't believe that uh, you could help someone with schizophrenia. I have like schizophrenic clients. I have like any wild clients that you don't even know. I have a clear belief that I could actually help them with their outcome. Uh, so when you're looking for an NLP coach, you want to make sure that uh, one of the big critiques of NLP is um, how come there's no randomized studies that it helps with depression? How come there's no randomized studies that it works for anxiety where the real fact is every single individual is different. Maybe a swish pattern works for one person, or maybe you got to do more of a deeper uh, a timeline therapy technique to the deep root cause, or maybe one person is simply um, changing their language patterns in their head. So a real NLP practitioner is going to diagnose the system, find where the wiring is incorrect, the programming, everything's incorrect, and work with that client individually. So one technique will be effective on one person. Another technique will be effective on another. Uh, we practice the theory called there is no failure, only feedback. So it might take six, seven, eight techniques in a two-hour time period, and uh, one of them will get the outcome. Uh, but we keep going and going and going until we create the solution that the client wants. So it, it, that's why there's no randomized studies. And they're like, oh, it's a pseudoscience. No, it's just there's no randomized study because if, if you put a thousand people through the same technique, different, some people are visual, visual techniques for someone. Other people need a hands-on technique because they're more kinesthetic. So you got to assess each client as an individual from their map of the world. And, and, and yeah. So I wanted to make that clear for people that start researching and looking into it. Yeah. And it's not like mental health and physical health, really. It's not a one size fits all, is it? Like every single person's different and every single person creates their own reality based on their own past belief systems, things like that. So yeah, I think it's really interesting chatting to someone like yourself who is, who has that, that the knowledge. And I 100% agree that like, if you're a practitioner, if you're a coach or a trainer, you're not, you're being really careful not to bring in your own, your own baggage, shall we say, into the mix. And I think I'll, I don't want to, I don't want to beat down health, mental health professionals, but a lot of like the PhDs and a lot of people who are well studied in therapy tend to be particularly unhealthy with their own thought patterns and beliefs and things as well. And I think that it's kind of a testing time for alternative you know therapies such as NLP which are coming more into the mainstream now because of the power of the practitioners using themselves as the the board the jumping off board and really like I myself I love to practice and every time I learn a new technique I'm the guinea pig like I practice on myself clear it myself and then I know that it's now good I'm now ready to you know use it on other people so um which is yeah fundamental for sure so what are your thoughts and opinions on where society is headed right now? Hmm. Well, um, but yeah, first I'll add to what you said that in, in hypnosis, a lot of NLP uses hypnosis concepts, uh, but the, the client will not actualize what the hypnotherapist did not believe himself. So uh, perception is projection. If I'm transmitting that this person can't double their income, they're not going to double their income. Uh, onto your question, where do I think society is going? I have a lot of hope. I believe that we're in an awakening period right now. And I believe that uh, more and more people are looking for alternatives and looking for uh, new ways of thinking, new ways of doing things. And this pandemic kind of forced us into that. Uh, we're like in a universal model of change right now. And uh, I have a lot of hope. And at the same time, um, I also know that it's not this or that, it's and. I also know that uh, people need to understand how their mind works. Uh, NLP is the operational manual of your mind. If you buy any electronic in the world, it comes with an, an instruction set. Uh, I wasn't given an instruction set to my mind. So we need to go and learn how our mind works. And uh, we need human intelligence. We need common sense. We need a uh, critical thinking ability and uh, we need to position ourselves where a robot cannot take our job. Uh, you could see the writing on the wall. That's one of the things I've always been good at is seeing 
different articles and I, I do a lot of time researching current events and articles. If you look at the current events and articles, they're already experimenting with uh, replacing certain jobs with artificial intelligence. Uh, the, the technology is already here. They just need an excuse to bring it in. Uh, a lot of people are sitting back waiting for uh, their, their, their jobs to come back. Uh, who's to say, and I hope they do come back. I'm just saying, we always have to be prepared. Who is to say that I've already seen why I've already seen in Vegas here in Vegas where I live, they're starting to have bartenders where they're like robots that pour the drinks. Think about it. The robot will always pour the perfect amount of alcohol. So they don't waste any money. And now they have the excuse for coronavirus that they don't have germs. So everything's sanitary. So people would rather have a robot pour their drinks in a bartender bartender. So if your job is replaceable by a robot, you need to start learning new ways to communicate, think, uh, negotiate, uh, sales, things that make you a force, make you irreplaceable. You could turn your ideas into reality. So I really believe that more people need to learn NLP. Uh, also, it protects you from, uh, if you, whether you like NLP or not, it's being used on you too. Uh, the media uses NLP every single day to bypass your critical faculty, to send direct suggestions to your unconscious or your subconscious, if you want to call it that, to program you with what they want to program. So it's so important to learn these things just so you are, are awake and aware uh, so that people can't manipulate you. Uh, so the future is, I, I think we have a lot of hope. Uh, I think a lot of things are changing. Uh, people are waking up to a lot of the corruption that has been happening for years and years and years. And uh, most importantly, uh, you could just see all the trends in, in health going through the roof. Uh, they're calling NLP and hypnosis the next billion dollar industry. That's a good trend for the future. Uh, at the same time, we need people to gain thinking ability so that everybody could think for themselves, uh, critically think, not blindly accept authority. And uh, um, because that's, the, the authority figures have put us in this place in the first place. They put us in this place and then we wanna to listen to them. So, why should we listen to them? Especially because most of the time, historically, it, it, they're proven to be lies. Cigarettes were good at one point. Um, I could go on and on. So also, you got to critically, everybody just blindly accepts science nowadays. Uh, who, when you trained in NLP, you ask questions, like, okay, who funded this study? Who was there? Do they have a motive behind this study? Uh, everybody just blindly will ignore their common sense, their, their thinking, because we've been so dehumanized through uh, genetically modified food. Uh, I wrote some other things down that I forgot. But uh, we're, we're so disconnected from our true nature and our essence that uh, we'll just read a study and be like, oh, wow, and uh, ignore our common sense. So I, I think it's really important in the future that we, we trust our intuition more. Our intuition is really our subconscious, I think and uh, just not blindly accept authority figures because they usually end up being uh, wrong in the end of the day. So that's what I'll say. Yeah, and they usually end up being paid by whoever, whatever it is that's, you know, what is it being endorsed? So yeah, the, I tell people to question everything all the time, question everything, question everything. Um, I questioned everything at school and was told sit down shop <laughs> so <laughs> and I left school pretty early uh and so you know like now I'm like just question everything question everything like why why you've been told uh, something's a fact what how do you feel about it like what is it what's your gut telling you about it well my gut telling is telling me that I, I shouldn't really believe this but I feel that if I don't believe it then people are going to judge me or whatever like it's just it's so crazy complex now and I'm like at the end of the day your judgment is your reality. So you have to listen to what your body is telling you. And everyone is different. And we all have our different likes, dislikes, tastes, whatever our bodies, some person, some person's body might be able to handle dairy and other person's won't. It's completely open and relevant and everything is like interchangeable. So one person's truth is not gonna agree with another person's truth. And it's having that convert, the open conversation without judgment is super important, you know. I might not agree with your beliefs, you might not agree with mine, but we're going to have a chat about it anyway, because the whole divide and conquer thing in the media, 
oh my god like you i know that you see it in the america and i see it in the uk just like the two sides um and i heard this really funny uh native american saying that was like the left wing and the right wing are both parts of the same bird <laughs> which i was like yes <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> so and also it sounds like an episode of futurama doesn't it with the robot <laughs> robotic bartender <laughs> Yeah, I could go on and on about this forever. I, lo I love talking about this type of stuff. Totally. Me too. Me too. Um, but I'm going to ask you, um, what are your plans and goals for the future, Zach? Um, right now, I'm, I'm working towards my uh, becoming a trainer of NLP. So I'm excited about that. I want to open up my own school and, and train people with, uh, with my mindset and concept put my flavor onto NLP and uh, do that for the rest of my life. Uh, I still like the coach, but the, the training is, is, is more fun to me. I like, I think it's more empowering. The, the, the true beauty of NLP is all the concepts uh, you could do by yourself with yourself. So it's the ultimate empowerment tool where uh, you're not dependent on anyone else. Uh, you're totally empowered. Uh, I'm working with Tad James right now. I've been working here for a year. So I still believe I have a, a long future with them. Uh, I'm going to continue doing that. I love it. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm learning a lot. Um, also, I, I've had some opportunities come to uh, take over some of the, the clubs in Vegas. Uh, it's kind of got put on hold for uh, the time being because of everything. Uh, they don't know when we're going to have events. So I'm thinking about stepping back in a little bit, not as much as before. Uh, like the nightclubs as in the music stuff yeah cool uh, yeah there's a really cool new venue by the the raider stadium and they uh, contacted me so i was like okay cool uh so the the future is just i kind of just take one day at a time uh, i focus on what i'm doing in the moment and then just take a small step every day forward and uh uh, I'm always sensor, my sensory acuity is always turned on. So I'm always aware of all the opportunities. Uh, one of my things that I do is uh, I never, I take every single meeting. So uh, people think I'm weird for that, but anybody that asks for a meeting, I take it because uh, sometimes a lot of, most of the time, complete waste of time. Uh, I've wasted so much of my time going to pointless meetings. Uh, but if one of those meetings turn into something big, then wow, like that's something awesome. And uh, I've always had an open mind for opportunities. Like when I was a kid, seeing the roses in the garden, I saw the opportunity there. Uh, so I'm always searching for opportunities. We have a, a reticular activating system that have you ever bought a car before? The next thing you know, you see everybody with the car, the same car. Uh, you literally have a, a, a system a reticling activating system that, that searches for like the goals or the outcomes you want to create. So I'm always imagining my future super bright so then I could find the opportunities. And then I'll go back to what you're saying too in NLP. Oh no, I won't we'll keep. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I also want to uh, push NLP forward. I want to add new concepts, I want to add new techniques, I want to innovate. Uh, new uh new things to the field i have a lot of ideas uh you have to I, I'm, I'm keeping it a secret for now but i want to uh we've been teaching the same nlp information for 40 years and i think that we can uh, take it even farther or at least add to it so that it, it comes together more symmetrical so uh, that's one of my plans too uh i'm going to start developing my own uh, nlp trainings and concepts wants to become a trainer it's all in my head i just haven't uh, put it to reality yet because i've been uh, uh really focused on on uh this has been a really challenging i say challenging me i have a positive ir internal representation that's what we call an nlp i have a positive vision of uh i have a positive vision of uh the world challenging so this pandemic has been really challenging, but it's been really fun. So all my focus has been there. And we've had, I think like six trainings uh, this year. Most of them have fell in with the pandemic. So we've had to do lots of jumping through hoops, moving goalposts, 
Uh, it's been really fun, but we've been breaking records, uh, even though these conditions are here. So uh, I'm looking to continue doing what I'm doing too. That's so exciting. It's really exciting to hear that you are, yeah, getting in the zone and letting just all those ideas and flow and stuff come to you. Because remember what Tesla said about how everything exists in the ether that ever has been done and ever will be done. When you get yourself into that flow state, you're just tapping into that and you're just letting the ideas come through you. So I have absolutely no doubt that you're going to get some golden nuggets of NLP on the go. Te Tesla also talked about, um, Tesla also talked about the importance of solitude, uh, yeah. being alone when you're coming up with ideas. So, uh, look at this time period when you're on, uh, home lockdown. If you guys are still on home lockdown, we are a huge blessing because good things happen in solitude. If you're a boxer, uh, if you watch the movie Rocky Balboa, what did he do when he had the train to become his best? He flew to Russia in the mountains by himself. So you could use this time to, um, to pretty much tap in and get all the good ideas. Solitude is your friend sometimes. So, it's not, it's not bad. so true. Absolutely. And what better time than this? Than where, what better time than now? Like I've always said for years, like now, now is the time, not tomorrow, not yesterday, not right now. Cause it's all we really have is this very moment in time. And just when we stop, we stop for like a day or two and, so many people who have been working their butts off for the past couple of years in jobs they didn't really like that much but they were just doing it because they didn't know what else to do have stopped now and now they're teaching yoga or they're meditating or whatever it is they're doing um, and it's just a re really good opportunity and you can either use this time to empower yourself or you can use this time to become a victim and it's really kind of like interesting to, to watch people watch human behavior shall we say um, on how people are using the time um, and yeah, I just, it's fascinating. I love it. Like I'm, this time for me has been so interesting because I've been able to do stuff like this. Like I wouldn't have been able, I wouldn't have done this kind of thing. You I know. was telling you the same thing before we went live. Yeah. And it all goes back. The first thing we teach in NLP is cause and effect. It all goes back to that. Are you going to be on the effect and blame your governor, blame uh, the pandemic, blame everything? Or are you going to be, like you said, the, the lady that's at cause like, oh, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to uh, become a yoga teacher. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to start a podcast. That's what I did. I'm going to use this opportunity to, uh, I see tons of people outside running, getting healthy. That's incredible. So there's one half of the equation where people are taking cause, they're taking responsibility, they're, they're using their time. And then there's the other half that are on Facebook, uh, excuse my language, bitching and complaining. So you what mean. do you want to be, cause or effect? And if, you, if you're stuck super deep in the hole in effect, Find an NLP person that could help you. They could shift you to cause really, really quick. Amazing. So, Zach, do you have um, do you have a technique that you use yourself on a daily basis that you could perhaps share um, that with us, like a simple, practical process that's really easy um, that you perhaps use and or, or teach, or just something that you could give us to help anyone who perhaps is having a bit of a difficult time at the moment. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, someone who's having a difficult time at the moment. Or even just something that you use like on a daily basis, even like, I don't know, first thing in the morning or what's, what does your daily practice look like? Uh, I'll, I'll teach my favorite one that I've been working on a lot lately. Um, it really depends. Like if we're talking about someone who's depressed or have anxiety, uh, those could be deep rooted. Those could be deep within the unconscious mind. So it's more of a, a deeper technique that I, you probably need a coach to have help with uh, to get you to the root cause, to discover what really is the problem that causes it. Usually in NLP, it's one problem that causes a lot of other problems. So an amateur NLP practitioner will work on all the other problems where a good NLP master will find that root cause that created all this, all this junk. If I had a whiteboard, I'll show you. Uh, so you just eliminate that, all the other problems go away. So for the really severe depression, anxiety, that type of stuff, you probably want to find a coach and it's worth your investment. There's nothing more empowering. There's nothing, Warren Buffett even says it. there's no better investment than yourself. So if, if, if you're not willing to invest your, your, your energy, which is money into living a 
better life than than stay in effect uh one of the techniques is i recommend everybody learn rapport uh, rapport has changed my life it's th the reason i uh was able to do have trust with the venue owners i've also been able to become friends with lots of millionaires like real like millionaires in, in vegas and new york all over the place uh because of rapport i'm able to have all different types of even but then i'm also able to create rapport with someone who's at the rock bottom so i could create a conversation with anybody anytime uh, any race any culture i have friends in in every single race and every single culture uh from and i know how to speak their language because of rapport you know how to speak to them how uh effectively so that they accept what you're saying your suggestions uncritically uh to teach you guys something right now uh dr tad james teaches something called hakalau state a lot of what dr tad james teaches from the hawaiian culture too it's pretty cool um going back to i think you were talking about it earlier about like intuition and trust uh, the hawaiian just believed uh they didn't believe in like diets and things like that they just believe like you eat something it it satisfies you you have energy keep eating it you eat something it doesn't satisfy you it doesn't give you energy don't eat it so they have a really cool culture uh dr tad james was initiated into a uh, uh, ancient huna lineage that's pretty secret so he has a lot of knowledge about the ancient hawaiian cultures he used to do trainings there and it's one of like the last untouched civilizations before uh, colonies came and take it over so it, it's still pretty accurate ancient information but hakalau state uh, we teach this the first moment you sit into your nlp class it's going to enhance your learning so you're able to learn faster uh, easier like your, your knowledge is, is installed uh, we also teach this to our trainers so that way when you're in front of an audience you're in a resourceful powerful state uh, when you're in a resourceful powerful state you're bulletproof uh, we teach this to athletes. Uh, athletes go into this state all the time. Uh, like we were talking about before, how you could be doing NLP without knowing it. They're doing this all the time. Michael Jordan's in this state all the time. Kobe Bryant's in this state all the time. They may not know it, or maybe they were taught it. I don't know. But it's uh, uh, Michael Jordan, they use this to get into that zone. Like if you ever played sports, when everything, you don't even thinking, you're just reacting perfectly. Uh, musicians go into the state, high performance drivers go into the state. Uh, some people call it peripheral vision. So what is this state? What is Hakala? What is peripheral vision? Uh, it's when you, you, most of the time we're stuck in this foveal, like we're looking at our phone, super hyper-focused on one little thing. Or right now I'm hyper-focused on the, on the computer screen. However, most of the interview I'm in this state, Hakala. Uh, that's how I'm able to just flow and, and talk about all my ideas. So it's when you expand your, uh, your vision outward, so you can see both sides of the wall. Uh, you can see like up, down, you can see your entire awareness expand it. Uh, peripheral vision is what they call it. Uh, when you're in this state, uh, your brain waves actually lower uh, into the alpha range. Uh, alpha is where creativity where uh, relaxation um, it actually turns off the flight or fight response so if you have a lot of fear right now you have a lot of stress you have a lot of uh, uh those type of emotions just by expanding your awareness out into uh Hakalau state or you can google it there's lots of videos on it uh it eases everything you're more tapped into your unconscious mind you are uh, your flight or fight is turned off I used to have very, I used to, like this interview, I would have been stressed. I would have been nervous. I would have, I, I, I would, like this type of stuff I would have never done. But now that I know Hakala I'll say, I just go into it and uh, I have no fear. It's because your fear is turned off uh, physiologically. Uh, so that's a really powerful technique. Uh, if you're talking in front of audiences, there, you got to do this if you're doing anything. You, you, to be an effective driver you have to be in peripheral vision you're probably doing it unconsciously but the point of nlp is to turn these unconscious behaviors uh, into our conscious awareness so that way uh, you could get into it easily and this simple technique that i taught you right now 
you could pay a thousand dollars for Olympic Olympian level coach to teach you this. Uh, all the Olympic level coaches, they get their athletes into peripheral vision. Uh, the UFC athletes, I know for a fact they use peripheral vision because they have to know, they have to see their, the whole body of the fighter. They have to see their toes to their head because if you could see their toe move in a certain way, uh, you will know, okay, that's an indicator that he's going to throw a right hook. And if you're in phobial, you're only focused on one area, you're not going to be able to see that. So UFC fighters are always in this state. And uh, the point is to make it conscious so that way you could do it on command. That's what NLP is, so that you could uh, take your best performance states, your peak states, and uh, do them on command anytime. That's fantastic. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Zach. That's awesome. Um, how do you spell that? How do you spell Hokalo? Uh Let me Google it. <laughs> There's lots of cool videos on YouTube. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely going to check that out, and I'm going to um, – recommend that everyone does as well okay it's h-a-k-a-l-a-u hakalau mm -hmm. state hakalau state uh, nlp they call it uh, peripheral vision they call it learning state uh they call it alpha state lots of names for it um, i like hakalau because it's paying tribute to uh the hawaiian culture and uh the reason like native, native americans did this too uh, uh it's kind of like we have to remember in modern society, we have uh, forgotten a lot. Like we've become disconnected from our true nature. Uh, in nature, we would have to go to the forest and hunt or do things like that. And you got to imagine if you're out in the, especially if you're a Native American, there's bears, there's grizzly bears, there's things that could kill you, mountain lions. Uh, peripheral vision makes you aware of everything even behind you. So you can even notice things behind you. So they would teach this to the young kids when they go hunting. Also, if, uh, let's say, a tiger jumped out of the bushes, uh, are you going to flight or are you going to fight? In that case, you have to fight or uh, you have to be in a resource, not fight, you have to be in a resourceful state to uh, perform. So it's super important when you would go hunting and stuff back then. And, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that we learned this. So I, I can, I'm a sail, so I sail, and I'm pretty sure that we learned this when we were sailing when I was a kid. So um, yeah, it's like to be aware of like rocks and things, you know, just be aware of completely your whole environment, even like what's going on behind you. I didn't know that was what that was. <laughs> so yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, they, they teach it. They teach this in like driver school. They teach yeah. it, and um, but they don't really go into like what's happening, why yeah, it's important, exactly. all the types. Of, so NLP really breaks it down. Yeah. So like yeah. uh piano players how can they play the piano hitting all the notes seeing the whole audience without being in this state uh so that's like it, we're doing a lot of nlp all the time it just we got to learn what it is in order to be do it on command yeah absolutely so zach where can everyone find you uh you can find me on instagram uh zach z-a-c-h nlp so it's uh the at sign Z-A-C-H, N-L-P, Zach N-L-P. Um, you could also find me on YouTube, uh, Zach Hammond. But <laughs> if you type my name and it's going to be a, a bunch of this uh, crazy thing, this dude. Uh, so just fo follow me on Instagram. My link is on Instagram, my yeah. YouTube link. So you could watch that. I have a bunch of episodes of kind of this type of to topics of self-improvement, health, uh, lots of cool alternative cool stuff. So check out my, my YouTube, follow me on Instagram. My DMs are always open. I do host a community NLP event on Sundays. So if you want to hop on and, and I teach a different concept every week, uh, it's complimentary. If you want to join that, just DM me. And uh, I, 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 I answer every single DM, uh, direct message. <laughs> I don't know if you guys call it DM. We do. But yeah, so uh, yeah, message me, follow me on Zach NLP. Uh, I'm not much on Facebook, so the Instagram's best. Okay, fantastic. Do you have any final thoughts before we close? Um, final thoughts. Uh, yeah, take take action. Whatever it is that you're looking to do, just take action. Uh, even if it's not NLP, if you have something in your mind, just my big thing that I'm teaching right now is just take the next small step. Uh, a lot of people get overwhelmed they they see they know what they want to become, but 
but they're so far from what they want to become that it's like a climbing Mount Everest. If you're going to climb Mount Everest, uh, you just focus on the first peak, climb to that peak, uh, celebrate that peak, be happy, be grateful, and then go to the next peak, hit that peak, be excited, be grateful, and then go to the next. So you're constantly just taking the next small step. Uh, for me, I decided, hey, I want to take advantage of my health. So I started with one supplement and then I started with another and then I started with changing the way I ate. I didn't just change one day to the next. I just started slowly adding new things in and six months later, I'm in a totally different place than I was six months ago. So I really, I'm really into this philosophy right now. And uh, if you're thinking about NLP, definitely message me because uh, right now I believe we're in the golden age uh, for this type of stuff. People need help. Uh, people, if you have a passion to coach, uh, the future of NLP is coaching. The future of coaching is NLP. That's per Dr. Tad James. So if you want to help others, if you want to make a difference, if you want to make an impact on the world, uh, take an NLP training, get certified because there is no better systems for communication, for creating fast, rapid change. Nobody wants to wait a hundred hours or months and months to make change. If you want to make change really quick, go, go take an NLP training. And then what happens is organically, uh, typically most people create such massive changes in the training that they have no choice. They feel it in their soul that they got to go help others because of the changes that NLP made in their life. So uh, I encourage everyone to take an NLP training and it's for everybody. If you're a teacher, it's going to make you more effective at teaching. Uh, if you're a salesperson, you're going to be able to serve your clients according to their values, uh, speak their language, uh, talk to them about what's important to them. Uh, it will enhance your sales game. Uh, I can't think of one career that NLP does not benefit and will not enhance your entire life. So take action. That's what I would suggest. Amazing. Thank you so much, Zach. Thanks for your time. <laughs> and yeah, from everyone here in the UK and whatever you are watching, thank you so much. And I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Um, and I'm coming to Vegas and we're going to party. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Send me the, the link. I'm excited to watch. Yay. Awesome. Right. It's like, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Um, and we'll see you very soon.